let's jump in. Guide tubes, offset, metal sleeve, sleeveless. So this is getting into more of the, um, the technical aspects of planning. We're going to talk about metal sleeves. Metal sleeves, um, they add another step that you have to print comes out and you have to take the metal sleeve. You've got to push it in and cure it. You've got to, um, you know, you add seven bucks per sleeve. They're reusable, um, but they get kind of jacked up a little bit. I really like the control of printing without them. It's quicker. You can get a little bit more, uh, a little bit more, a little tighter than the metal sleeves will give you. So guide tube. So what is a guide tube? This guide tube is this yellow ring, which you guys are going to see in a second, that's in the software. It's associated with the implant so that if you went straight down through that guide tube, this digital circle, it's going to hit your implant. Your implant's right in the center of that. So what we want to think about is when we put these guide tubes in, there's two aspects to this guide tube. There's the outer portion of it and there's the inner portion of it. Really the thing that, that people get confused on the most is that the outer portion doesn't matter if it's touching something or touching teeth or overlapping with another one. It's the middle portion. And I think this does a really good job at showing that because all this software is doing, it's taking a guide tube and it's building it into a snapping on you know, piece of plastic here and it's incorporating it with some features. So this guide tube became into this and it became integrated, but the software is smart and it cuts out all the parts that are on the teeth. And it cuts apart the stuff that's hitting the gingiva. And it really just leaves the inner core because that's what's actually guiding our drills. If this inner portion was lying halfway into the tooth, well, now you're not going to end up with this. This middle portion is going to be over in front of the, inside of the tooth. So remember, the inner portion is critical. It can't be impinging on other objects, but the outer portion can. Does that make sense to everybody? Cool. What the offset is, is the offset is the distance between the top of this guide tube to the platform of the implant. And that's what controls our depth. And so remember that 8.5 number that we talked about. That's the default number from the top of where we're going to hit our top of our drill to the platform of the implant. Um, when a metal sleeve has a fixed height, right, it's uh, like three and a half millimeters tall. So you get three and a half millimeters of an engagement of, wall, of engagement of the walls. When you go sleeveless, you can make that tube as tall as you want. So more height, you get more engagement. So a tighter ring and a taller tube, you're going to have that guide really grabbing. And now that wag factor is, becomes minimized. So these are ways you can customize these to think tighter control. And that's why I've kind of gone more towards the sleeveless and controlled more of the friction between that, that guide. And so now the wag factor becomes less of a play. So it combats against those deviated deviation factors that we talked about. It doesn't eliminate them, but it helps combat those. So I like sleeveless. I think it's uh, valuable enough to, to, to teach that and encourage that and just kind of go from that from the beginning. Uh, so if it's five millimeters, are you going in that hole and being like, make this 5.1 millimeters diameter? It's a really good question. Yep, that's a, that's a really good question because... It's exactly right. It's got to be just a little bigger, ideally a tenth of a millimeter bigger. So the default is exactly what you said. It's 5.1 millimeters. But here's where the next factor comes in, and it's called printer calibration. Because my printer and your printer in New Jersey to LA, whatever, and there's so many different factors in printing that now tenths of a millimeter comes into play in what's called calibration of the printer, where we might print the same thing on the same model printer, and mine might come out bigger than yours. And there's two ways to do that. One is you could spend a lot of time calibrating the printer and get it so that when, so 5.1 is exactly where you want 5.1 to be. The better approach is when you first get your printer and you're setting it up, you print three guides. You print a 5, a 5.1, and a 5.2. And you take all three of those and you go, and you take them out, and before the patient comes in, you take your drills and you try to push them through there, which one do you like the best? I'll tell you that um, 5.1 is what it's supposed to be. Our printer, um, we print at 5.25. That's what I'm at, same thing. Same, same thing. thing. Yeah, if I'm sleepless, I'm 5.25. 5 I try 5.1, 5.2, and too tight. it's too tight. It's too yeah. tight, yep. So, and I'm five, like 5.3, 5.13. Yeah. yeah. 
So yeah, it comes into your printer, it comes into how tight do you want it, how much friction do you want it. The easiest way, print a few at, at 0.1 millimeter increments, take them all, go see which one you like, now you have your number and that's the number you go to every time. The good thing is it's gonna be consistent with your printer. It's not like, dude, this one was too big, glass one was smaller. It's, it's really accurate and consistent. You just have to figure out what your printer puts out. Um, and, and your post-processing can factor that in because when we take these prints out, we're gonna wash them, we're gonna cure them. Inevitably, curing has some, some shrinkage slightly. So you wanna be consistent on that post-processing because some objects, um, really important to cure everything. Um, I, you know, I'll be honest with you, sometimes these, uh, these surgical guides come out and I don't even cure them. I wash them and clean them really good and I'll just run them to the patient's mouth and snap them on because they come out strong enough from the, uh, from the printer. Curing increases the strength significantly, right? Go ahead. Which resin do you use? So sur just the Sprint Ray surgical guide resin. Um, we still have the two, now they have the three, which he's got back there. Looks really cool. I mean, they just keep improving these resins. So from my experience with shrinkage, yeah. I found a lot of shrinkage with the surgical guide resin. Yeah. So what I did to counter that, I started using the hard splint resin. Yeah. And that completely eliminated any of the, the problems that you were referring nice. to. Nice. And then now, the problem now is that the patient started complaining of the rigidity of that resin. So then what I to counter that, I went back and I started printing these surgical guides using their Night Guard Flex. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that, that's just amazing. That's yeah. just a recommendation. The Night Guard Flex is really cool because, yeah, it's like he said, it's just, it's strong, but it's got a little flex in there. Steady or sleeveless? Uh, both. Nice. Yeah. But I don't like to go, it's not that I don't like to go sleeveless, it's just that the surgeon doesn't like to because... Yeah. One time, just one time, he experienced like heat because obviously he yeah, pressing yeah. too much, and then the the sur the guy kind of burned like that hole just kind of started smoking. That's why I asked oh, because wow. the, the night guard resin it's it's a little softer and kind of you know like stickier, more like malleable. I I feel like that would cause more friction in the surgery as well. With the flex, I only use sleep uh, the sleeves. Yeah, yeah. With the hard one, no. Yeah, yeah. sleeveless. Yeah. That, and that could be a great combo. Put a metal sleeve right into the flex one. Now you just get a nice flexible guy. So there's so many ways you could do this, right? I mean, you can really use, the nice thing about surgical guides is you can kind of use whatever resin you want to use in a, in a sense. Um, so obviously there's FDA kind of stuff, but you know, that's where the, the you know, the, um, the night guard resin, the sprint ray resin. Yeah. So, so the sleeve is three millimeters in height is what you mentioned. So when you're accounting for, you know, incorporating a sleeve, how do you design the height? Do you still keep it at 8.5, but three millimeters of it is covered by the sleeve? Or? Yeah, that's a good question. So when you use a sleeve, you lose any ability to increase that. That's why one of the reasons I don't love sleeves, because you're maxed at three millimeters of contact. And so it's only three millimeters of contact. But with a sleeveless, you, you theoretically could get more contact and more control. And you prefer 8.5 because of the kit that you use that has 8. <coughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So the Blue Sky Fully Guided Kit is built on this 8.5 parameter. And I'm going to show you how that all plays in in a second and when to, when to alter that too. Um, yeah, good, good question. So pick your resin, print a couple, figure out the numbers. Once, you've, once you dial it in, now that number is just locked in. That's the number you punch in every time. So there's that calibration process. Um, Blue Sky, we got a couple drivers. This, so this is fully guided. The standard one has one offset. This is 8.5 from the hub to the connection. So the platform of the implant to right here is 8.5. So if your offset is 8.5 and your drills you're doing 8.5 and your driver is 8.5 and you just hub it out and it hits, your implant is at depth to where you planned it. The variable offset driver allows us to um, change that offset and increase that offset from 8.5 and up because now we've got more lines here and this is where we can customize that offset because there are certain times where we want to raise that guide tube up higher maybe it's too close to the gum or the bone maybe it's too narrow between teeth and we need that to come up higher so if we change that and we go and we've changed it to higher than 8.5, now the regular driver isn't going to work because it's 8.5 is the max. 
This one's 8.5, 10.5, and 12.5. And so this allows you to customize that. And I'm going to show a video in a second. These are both um, ratchet or um, torque wrench driven. And then they have one that's, that's on a handpiece if you like to place it with a handpiece. Questions on that? So all those um, millimeters are dialed in the software, right? We just need to drop down the kit that we're going to use and that's it, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. yep. So if, when you select the, fully, the Blue Sky Fully Guided Kit, it's going to default to 8.5 offset, right? And so you might just live in that world and just 8.5. But once you start doing these, you're going to realize there's certain anatomic customizations that you have to do in order to fit around the patient's biology where maybe 8.5 isn't enough. And that's where we're going next. So this is getting into the technical side. And this is where we, where, you know, it takes some focus and time to really think about this stuff.